Okay, so zero force members. This whole concept is a time-saving exercise, and it comes out of the whole idea of method of joints. We're going to be looking at joints in this truss and all these trusses and, and see if we can find spots that force members to be zero force. Okay, so based upon the requirements that members only resist axial loads, as well as the fact that joints can then have force vectors in X and Y, some members can be observed to be zero force members. The concept of identifying zero force members is based in the method of joints approach, as I just said, but it is done prior to any drawing or calculating. Zero force members is something you should be doing when you look at any truss because it's a way of spotting by sight if a member has zero force in it. And if you know that it's zero before you even put pencil to paper, it could save you a lot of time and heartache, especially if you're having to solve systems of equations because you can't get isolated X and Y equations with one unknown. You're doing all this and then you find out one of them zero and you're like, well, that was a waste of time. So the zero force members concept is really important because it really will simplify your members down, your trusses down. If a force, if a member has zero force in it, the member's not even really there from a statics point of view, right? Because all we care about, all statics cares about is vectors. And if the vector is zero, we don't care about it. So if we can identify these up front, it's excellent, okay? So while knowing in advance that a member is a zero force member, it, while it's not mandatory, identifying these members can save a lot of drawing and calculation time and frustration. And, you know, you won't get as many bruises on your forehead when you're banging your head against the table because you will know, you'll have that knowledge up front that something maybe has zero force in it. Okay. And when you are doing this, remember you're, you're not even drawing any free bodies yet. You're just getting started. So there's probably a picture of the overall structure sitting in front of you, whether you drew it or a textbook drew it or I drew it or somebody drew it making you do this. There's a picture there and it says solve for these members. So you could draw big goose eggs over each one of those members as a zero fourth member. Just draw a big zero over it. And the reason is, is because before we're putting pencil to paper, we're identifying them. And as soon as you know they're zero, no matter what free body you end up cutting, whether it be a method of joints or method of sections later that we're going to learn about, that member has zero force in it. So it's good to go ahead and make it, it's like putting it on the billboard saying, yes, this, for, this member has zero force in it. And it's going to for the rest of the problem. What are the ways to identify zero force members? And there's basically two different ways to do it by sight, two different scenarios. Okay, the first one is if a joint has only two members framing in. So if we look at E up here, it only has DE and AE framing in. And there is no external load applied at E. Okay, there's no point load out there at E. Yeah, there's one over here at D. I don't care. I'm looking at E, okay? And there's no reaction there at E either, okay? Yeah, there's one at A. Again, I don't care about stuff going at, on at the far ends of these members. I'm looking at this joint right here. If all of that's true, two, two members framing in, no external load, no support reaction at that joint, then both of those members are zero force. So in this case, D, E, and A, E are both zero force members. If you don't believe me, Look at this free body diagram of joint E. That is the most free body. That is the most pointless free body diagram I have drawn today. It's just two members. There's no applied load, so there's obviously nothing inside to resist anything. They're just sitting there, zero. So they have zero force. Okay. They if you had re gone with a sawzall and cut these out this truss would not be impacted in any way, shape, or form. DE and AE are members that are, as we say, just along for the ride for this truss. They are not doing anything. They are not being loaded. So that's one way to identify zero force members by sight. Two members framing in with no external load, no support reaction. If there are three members framing into a joint, two of which are collinear, meaning they form a straight line. 
And just like the last one, no external load and no reaction at that joint, then the third non-collinear member has to be a zero force member. And here we have BD being a zero force member because we're looking at joint B here. And joint B, there are three members trimming in, AB, BC, and BD. They, those three, that fits the three member bit, but two of them have to be collinear. AB and BC are, in fact, collinear. BD is not. You're always, whenever you have three framing into a joint, three and only three, and two of them are collinear, just because of the very nature of trusses, because you have to have triangles, that other one won't be collinear. Then the other one is zero. So no, BD isn't 90 degrees to AB and BC. It's coming in at whatever angle it's coming in at. It doesn't matter, because look at this free body diagram right here, and some forces in the Y equal to zero. Obviously, this vertical element is equal to zero. These other two over here might not be equal to zero because maybe there's a tension in this member and it can be equal and opposite over there and that's fine and it can pass right through this joint. But this vertical element or vertically, vertical-ish element is, um, has to be zero because the vertical component of it has to be zero. A few final tidbits about zero force members. Go through and identify all those zero force members drawing drawing circles over the ones that are to identify them. Just realize as you're drawing them, you might be now exposing new potential zero force members. Okay, if there were four members framing into a joint and two of them were collinear and one of those members turned out to be a zero force member from the other end, now all of a sudden that joint only has three members framing in two of which are collinear. So that third one would also now be zero force. So go through both of those scenarios. Identify your zero force members. Step back, realizing that any of them that you drew a zero through might as well not even be there and reassess. What might be in the back of your mind is if they have zero force in them, why are they even there? Well, okay, there's a lot behind all this. I mean, First off, they've got to build these trusses and put them in place. So a lot of times as they're hooked up to the crane, they need additional support along so that they don't buckle when they're being loaded and put in place, hoisted by the crane. That's one reason. And then another reason might be, you know, think about a, a, you know, a train going over a bridge that's a truss bridge. You know, there might not be a force on that member applied at that joint when the train's not there, but when the train passes right overhead, there is a load there. We look at these static systems as points in time. And there might be other load scenarios that are happening at other points in time. And in those other points in time, maybe there is load on that member and that zero force member is not zero force. Just for the moment that we're looking at it, for the point in time that we are looking at it, it is a zero force member.